project was about language, but specifically what we call just language. And just language is intentionally using words and phrases to uphold the dignity of a person. So instead of saying a homeless person, you would name the person by their name and you would say that they're experiencing homelessness because it's a condition rather than a permanent um, position in life. And that's really important when you're especially talking to people who are experiencing poverty or homelessness or disability because they don't want to be labeled by homeless, disabled. Um, they want to be recognized as a person like everybody else does. And so my project was, um, the purpose of, what, of it was to explore the idea of just language and how it was important in different settings and in a, in a nonprofit setting. And the women at the Caroline Center really allowed me to explore that with them. So the interviews, um, we did about four interviews of pharma, uh, pharmacy technicians, students, and then the nursing assistant students. So they were separate because they had um, different lunch periods. So we were able to garner 10 participants um, after kind of two weeks of learning about each other and me being there, just being present. Um, so I had 10 volunteers sign up and we decided that it would be a good time to do the interviews during their lunch periods. And beforehand, before the interview started, I kind of um, came up with these worksheets and I used examples of wording and phrases from nonprofits in Baltimore that already exist. So it wasn't like I was making up all these phrases and they were responding to them. It was actually something tangible that was real. I didn't reveal where they were from. I just said that they were from nonprofits in Baltimore. Whether they were familiar with the places, I don't know. Um, but they really got to see real life language that is being used all the time in Baltimore by these nonprofit agencies, and it gave them an opportunity to respond. There's a quote by Mother Teresa that says, if we have no peace, it is because we, forgot, we have forgotten that we belong to each other. And we can really use language in a negative way to separate one another, to say that, I'm, that that's them, that they're, they're over there, and we're us, and we don't want anything to do with them. And we create this dichotomy of us and them, but the women really expressed that they wanted a connection between us and them. You can learn about race as much as you want in your classroom setting, through books from the library, through NPR, wherever. You can have so many discussions about it. But if you're not in engaging 
emotionally with race, with gender, with socioeconomic status, then you're not fully learning what you can learn from it. And so because all of the women were black and I was white, and even though I'm the same age as them, I'm the same gender, I come from a different socioeconomic class, or at least I was perceived to be. I'm from you know, northern New Jersey. I'm from Loyola, which is in, like a totally different environment than where they're living. And so I had to emotionally engage in that. And that was really, really powerful. It was, um, it was a lot different than just reading about white privilege in a classroom setting. I could intellectually know what right, white privilege is, but I didn't necessarily emotionally engage with it. And I think that is something that I really did through this project. And I think that so many students and faculty have such great ideas that they could explore further that you can't necessarily do in the classroom. And so just taking that chance to even apply is really, um, it's really valuable and you could end up doing it. Um, the project was something that I could have never imagined it to be. I would, you know, I had hopes and expectations, but what I learned from it was so much more than I ever dreamed I could have learned. And the outcomes, um, whether it was going to be negative or not, whether they were going to tell me that words mattered or not, I knew that at the end of the day that was going to be valuable and it was going to be a really good experience. Um, I was kind of, in a way, my own boss and I did have um, advisors and mentors, but it was, um, it was also a really independent experience and I had to really rely on myself and trust myself and um, mature and grow and educate myself because I couldn't just go into this blind saying, you know, I know how to do research because I didn't. So even if you don't know how to do research, you can still take that chance and explore something that you're really interested in.